Hi everyone and welcome back to my playlist and here we are covering Nest.js with GraphQL. Okay, so this is we have already talked about the introduction and the agenda of this whole playlist. Now we can get started with the writing Nest.js application with the GraphQL. So we are going to start everything from the basic like okay, okay how to build the basic Nest.js application using Nest CLI. So we are going to use Nest CLI and we are going to build everything from scratch. Okay, like we can generate a simple Nest JS project. And then that in that project we will introduce all the different things like okay, how to introduce the GraphQL using Nest JS GraphQL modules, and then we will write resolvers and expose query and mutation from the APIs. So I'm starting this project from the scratch so I can explain all the different parts, not some existing boilerplate code which I already have in different repositories. So let's wait for the CLI then what we can do is it's same as the angular CLI kind of setup. Here we can just do is nest new. This is the next command which we can hit nest new and the project name. So, so this is our scaffolding. Uh, we are going to use npm. It is installing all the modules and these are all the folders and the files getting created. Okay, we have nest CLI, we have package JSON, we have tsconfig because the code is in TypeScript. We can see one controller, one module and one service. And this is the main module which is the root module and the main.ts is bootstrapping that root module. Okay, so it has all the basic structure which we need for the project. Now we can start adding the Nest.js GraphQL in the GraphQL dependencies we are going to use Postgres. So we can also add the dependencies for the TypeORM because Nest.js TypeORM and Nest.js GraphQL these are the two main modules we are going to use. So we were using Nest.js CLI and with the help of Nest.js CLI we were able to create uh, this basic application. This is the basic folder structure which contains the default service, controllers and the modules. Now we need to introduce the we need to introduce all the required other modules because we are now using GraphQL. So there is a Nest.js GraphQL module which we have to add to our this module setup. Before going to that direction, one common topic I also wanted to cover is let's make this uh, folder structure production ready and include all the required things we wanted to have in a project. So what all things we always want to have in any particular JavaScript or TypeScript project. So recently I introduced, I added one blog and this blog particularly talks about how to baseline a Nest.js microservice. Okay, we call something baseline when it includes all different aspects of a microservice. Let's say here we are writing a GraphQL based service. So it should contain all the test setup, all the linting setup, all the guidelines, all the, the linting setup. And even you can also introduce some GitHub hooks using Husky so that whenever you do the commit, it automatically run the prettier, it checks for the linting and it format your code, right? And it also executes the test cases. You should also have the configurations for the Docker and Docker Compose. You should have the proper compiler configurations and the build configuration with the TS config. CI pipeline, if you are planning to deploy to Heroku, let's say we are building the GraphQL, uh, simple GraphQL app, we can also plan to deploy it to Heroku. So all these things should already be configured, then we can call a project as a baseline. And the baseline means just after using Nest CLI, we created a bare bone folder structure. Now we can add on all the required things okay i i need a prettier i need a eslint e, eslint rc prettier rc i need a gitlab yml file i need a proc file for the heroku deployments or maybe uh, the ci pipeline file based on your deployment either you are using uh, uh, github travis ci or gitlab uh, gitlab ci but your your file structure can be something like this okay this is my target so what do we have in the, the baseline structure? You should have a ESLint RC, 
if you are using docker docker file and docker compose dependencies because we need uh, the postgres container and the node container and then just configurations because we have to write the test cases using just in the nest js and all the build configurations for the ts config not more if you wanted to start the applications or you can just use uh, nest cli start dev command and uh, all the hooks the husky which is uh, pretty much working with the commit lint and the prettier to enforce the coding guidelines right commit commit guidelines even the commit guidelines when you are randomly putting any commits so this blog particularly talks about okay what all different modules we need so i will be just adding those in the project and start using them so let's say i wanted to use a commit lint so i need to install the commit lint cli and the commit convention all these uh, modules i will be adding in the dev dependency of our project so here these are our dev dependencies i will put them somewhere in the middle we already have the i think the eslint configuration so we don't need to worry about adding them again okay then i think i need to add a config commit gen config in the package of json and i think here we are using jest in the package of json only so we have to remove this jest configuration and we can have particularly jest e2e config jest config and all and i need to write commit line config.js file in my code base in the root this will enable the commit line okay this is the first thing now i can do i can introduce husky in my project so what i will do is first of all i can install and this should also install other modules which we have recently added okay so what does what will husky do husky is i mean when you are running a scripts automatically you can actually introduce the github hooks like when you are doing a commit then what you want before commit you wanted to give a proper format to your commit commit can be a feature can be a bug fix refactor build or the style changes or something like that right so before you even create a commit on your uh, github history git local git history what it will do it will run a lint it will run a prettier and it will just check all the formatting of the code so you can introduce the git hooks so what you can do is you create a dot husky folder and it will create and you can introduce the git hooks git hooks can be simple as a git commit git message so there are pre and post hooks you can introduce for commit like prepare commit message pre commit commit message so what we will do is uh, we can create one script here prepare install so looks like we already have so we can introduce this script that will do some baselining so when i do npm run prepare so basic uh, git hook is installed this is husky.sh now here we will start creating these github hooks right so what we are doing is inside husky we can create this commit message okay then we have a pre commit prepare commit message if you look into the script it is nothing but it is enforcing some guidelines on us when we are creating new commit these pre and post hooks will execute okay let's see the commit message so these are some of the hooks i'm adding in my project this is pre commit and this is my commit message
So now, whenever you are adding a new commit, then this pre-commit will hook will introduce and it will run the lint and it will run the free tier. And it is just using the husky to do all those things. Okay. Now with Husky, we can also think about introducing the Prettier because Husky is enforcing Prettier to execute. So let's talk about that first, setting up the ESLint and Prettier. So for the ESLint, like the e now TSLint will be deprecated soon. We will be using ESLint everywhere only. So these are some of the modules. I think these are already there. If we look into my package.json, all the ESLint related dev dependencies. So these are starting from here to here. So do we have everything already there? The parser, ESLint plugin and config parser and the config prettier. If you wanted to add on other plugins, it's you can add. But looks like I do have everything required. Now I can create my ESLint RC. I think we already have some default one. Now it depends on, okay, what do you want? This ESLint RC is using extending these plugins, the recommended ESLint uh, standards and the prettier standards. So I think this is already satisfying our needs that we are using recommended and we are also introducing the prettier formatting. So prettier will override whatever the, the, the rules which has been imported from the TSLint standard. Okay, this is also doing the same thing. We are using recommended and ESLint recommended. And we are also using the prettier recommended. Okay, now prettier RC. This is the file which we can introduce. These are the the common prettier configurations. We can add some more. These rules will override some rules, some standard rules provided by the ESLint. And then we can write these standard npm scripts what are what these are doing npm run lint npm run prettier npm run prettier write npm run format npm run lint fix these are something which we will need while writing the the code every time like prettier prettier write prettier format and all these things i think some of these we might already have like the format so what we will do is we will put our stuff and this looks nice now and we can execute npm run prettier what it will do is it will run prettier against all the js files typescript files yaml and all prettier right you are giving a right to the prettier to update the files if there is a formatting mismatch right and then there is a format so these are all the commands which we are using and then build configurations it's good to have a one common build configuration but what we can do is we can have a two build configuration which is already there in the nest cli this ts config build is extending the TS, global ts config and sometimes you wanted to override the the ts config parameters just for creating the build then you can actually override them so this is my main TS config. What it is saying is, okay, modules I'm using common JS. My out directory is this. Target is ES 2017. All the TypeScript compiler options, image uh, metadata decorators, experimental decorators, and all these flags, strict nulls, and all. Now, if I wanted to override few properties, I can do it. So what I'm doing is you can extend the TS config and create the build config. And here I can provide my additional compiler option. So let's keep it this only. Okay, root directory is forward slash. Declaration false, remove comment. So this is particularly I'm creating for build, right? I don't need source map and all these things. And I wanted to exclude all the things which I don't want to be uh, executed in the build so there may be a coverage there may be some other folders you want to, you can exclude all the type of folders which you don't want it to put inside a build so i don't want it to build node modules all the tests everything which is there in the disks i don't want it to build it because that is the outcome and tests i'm skipping right and then 
all the test related configurations. Test related configuration means we are using test and in this baseline project which is generated from the nest CLI here I think the jest configurations are has been placed in the package.json itself what we can do is we can remove or isolate these things let me just clean up the package.json here we have the jest configuration but what happens is when we are writing the, the nest js we always have the the jest config then we have just e2e config and lot of other just related configuration so it's better that we should create our own configuration files for the just and we already have i think the commands to run the the tests test is using just test watch test coverage right so what we can do we can create a simple just config file just config.ts and that will take care of all these things and one more file which you can add is just e2e i think it should look like just e2e config.js and with some modifications from the existing just configuration you should be able to add okay so let's take a look on to these things we have I think we need to check the, the just config. It's just config.e2e. Like if you wanted to write end to end test cases, you want to have something else, then you can have this separate configuration. And what does it has? It has the same things, but if you want to execute the test, because here we are targeting a particular set of files, right, which contains the e2e.js, e2e.spec.js. So I will just test config e2e and then we have a just config. Just config. If we read this configuration file, it is plain and simple. What it is doing is set of files. Here these are the set of files before running the test cases. What it is saying is inside test I need set up environment variable file. So inside test, I will create one file which will help us to bootstrap the environments for the test project. And what we are doing inside this, we are just writing these two lines of code. What we are saying is use the .env and put everything inside process.env from env.test. So we need to create env.test file that will be used for test, test environment and dot env will be used for local environment and this we are not going to commit we are going to create env.example file so you can take a look what all environment variables we are going to populate okay so looks like we have most of the setup ready now we can introduce the docker which is the last thing i think we have and that is also important one so most of the projects which I am building are either using Postgres, some kind of an ORM tool with some database, MySQL, Postgres or MongoDB. So it's like it's two container project. One is a Node.js container, another is a Postgres. So we can create a Docker file sometimes. I mean, your baseline project should contains all the configuration. It doesn't mean that you wanted to use all the containers. You can disable, enable or comment the container you wanted to use. Here we are using type ORM. So, so we also need to create orm config.ts. If you are using type orm, then you are already aware. We are not going to put anything inside this, but later we will introduce put something there. Okay, then we have ts config. Now let's create a Docker file. Docker file is same as like other Docker files. What we are doing here is we are just spinning up the node container and copying the code, copying the package and package log file, and just doing npm run build and exposing the code. This is from all my baseline projects we have. And finally, we are executing this command npm run start prod. Okay. And this is Buster Slim image, which is a lightweight image. And we are using this Docker entry point. 
this script is just to okay when you are starting the docker again and again we don't need to execute npm install and all these things or type rm migrations so these are some custom script i have added as a docker entry point which will get executed and it will save our time when we are sp spinning up container again and again and then we have docker compose file I always create docker compose and docker compose override so docker compose contains your containers what all containers you want to have and I think we should have something already placed in this so what do I have I have two containers one is the node container another is a postgres right node container is being built from this current folder there is a docker file i think we can skip the volume for the npmrc and it is pointing like this this is the volume mapping of the current source code in the root directory with the app inside the container and we are using postgres another is i am using docker compose override here i will expose the ports and all the environment variables okay i misplaced the code should be docker compose override and this should be inside docker compose yml you may not need a node.js container what i do is once your application is up and running you can actually start using node even without container you can just do npm run start dev and for postgres like if you are using database connection you can use just local host and the port name the port name for the database is 5434 for your host system okay and these are the environment variables i have so this is a plain and simple docker setup we will spin up the the containers and we will see how it is going to work okay so if we look into docker compose override file here we are using docker utils we are mounting docker utils into uh, entry point for the docker so what this docker utils will do we can have some custom script which will bootstrap our postgres container with the predefined set of database so what we are doing is we are passing this variable right example api example api testing so what we want is when the container is coming up we already have these two databases and our application starts connecting and using these database so we can create this docker util folders so this is the i think the last thing we have and after that we will test our application so create new folder and we have docker utils and inside docker utils we are going to put some scripts okay so docker util i mean the first script which is entry point script is not needed for the database we can also remove it what we want is with the with the help of the script we wanted to create the database okay so i already have a predefined script what it does is it uses this variable it logs in with the postgres user and it will create these two database it's like running a loop on the postgres multiple database and it actually isolating the names with the comma it it sees there are two database and it is just creating these two database for us i mean it is executing this script this method two times by passing the database right it is saying create user this particular data database create database this and grant the privilege on this database to this user okay okay so the this is all about the docker setup we have i mean i really i usually don't run the node.js on the container because i already have a lot of container running on my system i will just run postgres and i will use the node.js local setup and whenever you wanted to use a database so you can use the environment variable with the port uh, which is specified for the host which is 5434 i mean you will connect to the postgres container using 5434 through the host name as local host okay now another very uh, small things we can add on we can also specify the engines in the package.json file so currently let's say if you are sharing this project with your colleague and he doesn't have the appropriate version of node.js and you have a dependencies which has 
which are dependent on uh, the particular version of uh, Node.js, then it will break, right? So in the engines, we can specify the version for the Node, which can be uh, 12.x or we can have 14.x. Okay, and the npm version, we can also specify the npm version, which is which should be greater than and equal to 6.9.x or something like that. And there is another thing is the dev engine for the dev dependencies. That also we wanted to keep same 12.x and 14.x. And to enforce this, we have to add on add a script. And there is a particular node module which can help us in doing that. That is, I think, FBJS script that we have to install first. And then add a script in our package.json scripts. So this is our script. And here we can add another script. What it does is it will check the engines and whenever you are running command, it will check the engines from the package.json if they are not aligned with the node version you have. It will throw an error. Okay, you cannot run this project, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now it's time to run the project. Now, uh, other configurations you might have is the new relic, some kind of application performance monitoring tool you have, new relic, uh, or some GitLab CI YML, or something like that. So, let's say I have another file is GitLab CI YML that I will check later that what all things we can have inside this right or you can have some another configuration based on your ci ci uh, tool like circle ci travis ci or gitlab ci and npmrc file if you are using some external private module or your organization has a gitlab registry or some private npm registry from where you wanted to fetch the modules in that case, you can have npmrc. Rest we have a env.test, env.example configurations. If you wanted to use NodeMon, NodeMon, I this is my favorite module. Like whenever I change the code, I wanted to restart the application. But that is also provided by Nest CLI. I think that is start dev. It actually watch all your changes happening in your SRC and it will keep restarting your application. So NodeMon is not required. You can have a new relic if you are using some application performance monitoring tool. Just write a nice and clean readme file. And this is your the basic project. Now we will run the, the Docker Chrome containers and we will see the application running. Okay, so let's start our application. Uh, what we can do is first we can check our Docker container. It is running. Okay, we can just do docker compose down. We will this container and we will create this container again and we can also check if any of the volume has been created by this. Okay, so docker compose up. So because we are also going to use this uh, Postgres database script, which should create a database for us. Uh, let's see how it goes and then we will start our application. I think we got some permission issues. Okay, it has created database and it has interrupted here, permission denied. So let's do ch mode docker utils. And then try this again. Maybe we need to kill this docker volume if it has been created. Even kill the container.
just for cleanup and then do the docker compose up again okay now you can see the statements it is creating the role creating the database and we are good this container is up and running we will use this database once we have the graphql apis running and they start you consuming using typo rm okay for now we can just see our application uh, we can do npm install again because we have added some packages directly in the package.json so it's better we do npm install again that will install all the, the required dependencies which we have added additionally and then we can do npm run start that will just start the application where we don't have much right now it's just uh, going to bootstrap on 3000 port later we'll introduce all the configurations like uh, populating something in the env like something like connection url host port and all the runtime configurations which we need for type ORM for the GraphQL modules. Okay, now to introduce GraphQL in our project, what do we need? So currently we have basic bare bone structure with the, the project baseline. Now we will start adding things onto this project. Okay, when I say some things, that means Nest.js GraphQL module because that will enable our nest.js microservice to expose the graphql interface then we will write uh, mutations and the resolvers those are nothing but the the es6 classes typescript classes and we will write some modules so inside src we can create uh, modules and inside modules we can create all the modules which we want either it is a domain or a module so we can create api module sometimes it is a little slow okay and we can do npm run start dev that will keep starting my application so instead of modules i will call it as a domain and inside domain we can create all the entities let's say inside domain we can have there are two type of folder strat strategies we can use in the nests enterprise project either you can call it as a module so okay the user module account module feature module and every module will contain their entities controllers dtos services factories providers inside that folder let's say if i'm creating a user or auth right now inside user i will create all the dto let's say dto and then i will create services and controllers providers same as it is like but currently we are not creating a big application so what we can do i can use a aggregated folder structure strategy where I have entities which will contain all the entities services contains all the services so what we can do is let me just delete this one I will create domain again or now we cannot call it as a domain let's put a modules and here I can create okay there is a config module okay and we are going to have a database module one you can call shared module these are the modules and these are actually you can call external module like database module will be used by all the modules config module will be used by all the modules and shared modules and then you can also add a feature modules feature modules is like okay api module Currently, we have only one API module. API can be a user APIs, account APIs, or something like that. Okay, here we will put all the entities. Now, this API module, here we can put entity, all our services, all our controllers. Okay. 
provided so this is this will become a root module and these are the additional modules to make it uh, i'm always confused with the names domain and in this domain i have all the the modules i can call it as a dto services controllers providers all these things i'm going to have and these are the external module like config module database module shared module and you will expose the domain module from here and domain module i will import in the app dot module okay this is a single folder stru structure i will put all the controllers of this whole project here dtos entities providers and services okay uh, let's see now in the next part like how we are going to introduce nestjs graphql i mean that is fairly easy what we can do is we can start uh, adding that as a dependency in our project currently it is just a bare bones structure so our node application is started but uh, let's add our additional modules npm install minus minus save these are the core modules so what we are going to use is nestjs graphql okay nestjs type orm i think i already have added that is nothing to do with the graphql nestjs graphql we have and type graphql for some typing support type orm for nestjs type orm and i will use graphql is another module and graphql tools i think i'm writing this correctly graphql graphql tools and apollo server express i mean this is all built on the apollo express server i mean this nestjs also built on top of express and nestjs uh, graphql is just implementation on top of that so it is hiding the overlying implementation and providing the annotations and all to create your resolvers and the queries okay and then i will install some dev dependencies respective to all these modules and we are good to start okay so we have all the required modules nestjs type orm nestjs graphql and graphql apollo server express graphql tools looks like we have everything and now we can start using all these modules in our app module let's see how we are going to bootstrap the app module or uh, we can just create one domain module because this is going to be the the second root module so we have app module app module will be dependent on the domain module so this will be everything so instead of providing everything inside app module i will use the domain module for all these things currently i don't have a controllers and services as uh, soon i will have these and i will introduce them okay so in the imports in the imports i need to specify what all modules i am importing so as i talked about we are going to use config module config module is something which is provided by nestjs config okay so what we need to do is config module dot i think i need to import this config module dot for root is a method and you can actually pass all the configurations config module dot for root the default implementation will look into your dot env file and put all those environment variables in the process dot env okay we need to have a nest js config i think i already have it import config module from nest CS config. Okay, I was not having it. And then it is providing the validation schema also. With the help of that, you can actually validate your environment variables. So that is important thing. Validate schema dot joy object. 
and regarding that i also covered one article on my blogs like what all possible ways you can actually uh, populate the environment variables for your node uh, nsjs project so managing environment in all different ways for your nsjs project let's say uh, your because either you will be using nsjs config module or you will be writing your own config module it's all same right here what we are doing i'm doing is config module dot for root and i'm saying explicitly okay i'm just passing you this env file path which can be dev env production env just use that okay and if you are using the default implementation then it will just look for whatever is in the dot env and put that in the process dot env okay or you, or you can specify the environment file path or the other option is with the help of config module you can also do the validation schema what it does is it actually validates your variables like env should be a string port should be a number or db url should be a string all the environment variables either can be a boolean number or a string you can also do a validate right node environment variable node env name can be develop production staging qa nothing else the default will be development if you are not specifying all these things you can specify and you can also write your own config service uh, something like this okay here i wrote my config service and my own config modules and providing a mechanism to load all the config variables in the process.env and when i want, when i want to use it i am using it something like this config module like this config service dot get dot db because i might have created a getter method in the config service okay you can check out this these are the there are many possible ways of doing it we are just using one of it so here we can specify all the validation criteria okay so we are using validation schema to validate the environment variables and we are using joy so let's install that module first and then we will import it and here we can import this joy in our project so we can validate all the environment variables which we are using i copied from nsjs documentation and here in the validation schema what all things we have we can use okay node environment variables should be of type this port should be of type this or that so that i will be passing here so another required variables we have is the database url we already know that we are using uh, postgres so for type orm the connection type will be the, the will be postgres and here it will be joy dot string and it will be required okay so these are the the validation schema i have what does this mean is all these modules are required and we have to pass them the okay this is all about the config module now config modules we have a node a node environment port port and the database url these are the minimum basic things we need now we can also use import the type or module because the type or module we are going to use everywhere in our project so next is type or because that is our database layer type or module and here we are going to dynamically initialize it using type or module dot let's see how we do it type or module dot for root async there are different methods type or module provide for root for root async so here you can see for root async this is a synchronous dynamic initialization of a nestjs project and here we can import we can provide the dependency because what it needs is it we need to feed a configurations here so we will be passing config module and we will be injecting the config service inject config service and inside use factory 
because these are the three arguments use factory use class so we will be injecting adding the config service we will be passing the config service of type config service and we are going to return the config module options for this module okay config service we need to import it from nasdaq config and what we need to return we can return the whole nasdaq type orm config module options so if we see type orm module options which are which are name uh, okay if we if i go inside this connection options these are all our connection options i think it should be extending type or a module options i mean the connection options is the object which we need to pass to initialize this module okay let's see this so what all things we needed we needed the name of the connection which is let's say default and i will pass type type is postgres because we need to tell type or am okay my database is postgres and then i can simply use url and how you will get url we can use config service dot get and the same variable database url and all the other things also you can pass which are required entities inside entities you will be passing all the orm entities which you have either you will be passing some directory name okay this is the particular directory where i have all the orm entities created for type orm and then synchronize which i always keep false even for local development okay so this is our type orm config module now next thing is uh, we will be using nasjs graphql module and these orm options are type orm async module options okay now next module we are going to use is graphql module dot for root because this is a graphql project okay and just import this graphql module now what all things we can pass to initialize this module right so there are a couple of options like playground uh, your all the definitions where you are passing playground is true and definitions means you have to provide a path where the schemas are kept okay so we will talk about all these options like how we are going to provide a definitions and what is a type path and what is a playground currently i am passing all these things but in the next video we will talk about okay what all different options you can provide either you already have a graphql schema you can pass or you can generate the graphql schema from the resolve words and the queries you have already written okay so let's see all these options in the next video where we will try to understand how nasjs graphql module initialization really works okay because at the end what we need is type definitions resolve words and queries and uh, this is a simple implementation of a yoga graphql or apollo graphql server it's built on top of the same thing it's just like we need to write less code and we just need to use uh, annotations to do everything okay uh, let's catch up in the next video meanwhile uh, you can take a look on to this i will also deploy push this code to the github